back again and this time I have a book haul and I have several books here so I may divide this um, into two videos. I'm just going to start going over the books and then if it seems like it's running too long then I'll, I'll stop and do the rest in the second video. So we'll see how it goes and uh, I may stop halfway through. So the first books I'm going to talk about I got from Book Outlets. Um, I was thrilled to find this book here, Cape Cod by Henry David Thoreau. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Uh, this is just a book that he wrote uh, while he was staying in Cape Cod. Um, apparently they're just his musings. He's talking about, uh, it says here that he talks about, he came to understand the complex relationship between the sea and the shore. He spends nights in a lighthouse, fishing in huts. He was, spent some time on isolated farms. He wandered the beaches, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I just thought it sounded like really interesting and I've never been to Cape Cod and I don't really know anything about it outside of what I saw in the movie Splash when I was in elementary school. <laughs> so I thought this would be a really interesting read. I actually saw that on Steve Donahue's channel. He was talking about that book. And then this one is called The Badass Librarians of Timbuktu by Joshua Hammer and I am very very excited to read this book because this book is about um, here I'll just read you the, ta the little tagline here because it tells you everything you need to know. To save precious centuries old Arabic texts from Al-Qaeda a band of librarians in Timbuktu pulls off a brazen heist worthy of Ocean's Eleven. So these these um, librarians we're worried Al-Qaeda would destroy these ancient texts and so they smuggled them out of the country. And this talks about how they did that and it's non-fiction, it all really happens. So I'm very, very excited to read that book. And then uh, also from Book Outlet, I got Madame Bovary by, oh, let's see, Gustav Flaubert. Uh, hopefully I'm not butchering that name too badly. Um, but this is a classic that I have never read and I've always wanted to read this and I never did read it. And if I'm remembering correctly, there's not much of a um, synopsis on the back. Um, but if I'm remembering co correctly, it's about a woman who was engaged to be married and the, the man uh, dumps her. And um, she spends her life uh, depressed over it is my understanding. So I thought that might be a really good one and I haven't, I haven't read that one yet. So I saw the opportunity to pick it up cheap and I got, oh, and I forgot to tell you too. Yeah, this is like a, um, what is it called? Paper mill, the paper mill press. Uh, this is their, um, their like little collectible uh, series of classics. They have like the flexible covers. I really, really like the flexible covers. My favorite kind of cover other than hardback is uh, the flexible cover. So I held it open and everything and it seems like it's going to be pretty easy to read. So I was really pre pleased with this book. Uh, the next book I got from Book Outlet was Archaeology from Space by Sarah uh, Parkak or Parsak maybe. Um, and it's about, the synopsis describes exactly what the cover says. How the future shapes our past is archaeology, the study of archaeology from space. So apparently that's a new thing and I want to read about it. Um, let's see, I haven't even seen any documentaries about that. So I was really, I was really pleased to find this book on Book Outlet. And then this one I saw on T Steve Donahue's channel. This just came out in April. So I was really surprised to see it on Book Outlet. I thought that they only did like overstock books, but, and it doesn't even have a, a mark on it. You know, usually Book Outlet puts a little marker. There's like always like a little marker thing uh, because it's an overstock book from another store, but this one doesn't have that. Um, and it's called Becoming Wild by Carl... Safina. Steve Donahue just praised and praised to this book on his channel. And so I uh, uh, looked it up and read a sample of it and I thought, and I was really impressed with the writing. So I thought, I really want to read this book. And uh, I'll just read you the little tagline here. How animal cultures raise families, create beauty and achieve peace. And it's supposed to um, give you a look at the culture of animals because we don't often think uh, about animals having culture, but this book says they do and talks about it. So thought that would be very interesting. Plus I really liked the writing when I read the sample. Okay, so that's it for the books that I got from Book Outlet. These next ones, kind of random. This one um, I got used and I was very impressed. It is in perfect condition. It's a perfect, the dust jacket. There's not even any damage to the dust jacket. It's just 100% perfect. I paid $5 for this. I was so impressed. Um, it's called The Good House by, let's see, Tanarive Du 
I'm sure I'm just absolutely butchering that name, but here you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I bought this because this is going to be the um, book that we re read in, let's see, in I think August um, in Rachel's book club over at the Shades of Orange. So this really sounds good. I'm looking forward to reading this. It's a haunted house story. Another book that I got used, which um, I was actually a little disappointed in, in its condition because it was listed on Amazon as being new with some shelf, some minor shelf damage to the dust jacket. This, not any kind of new. Look, look at this. It's totally discolored. It's dirty. I'm going to have to clean the heck out of this thing. I was very disappointed in that. Um, yeah, they essentially just lied, but you know, that does happen. So anyways, I saw this on Steve Jonahue's channel as well. I'm always getting books off of Steve Jonahue's channel. It's called The Lodger Shakespeare, His Life on Silver Street. And it was written by Charles Nickel. And since there really isn't any that much information around about William Shakespeare, um, this book covers what information there is. Apparently he was involved in a court case. And so they actually have a record of the things he said during the court case. And so what's known of him is in this book. So I'm really excited to read that. I'm really on a nonfiction kick. I, I'm kind of burnt up on fiction. <laughs> I just, I need to take a break from fiction for a while. So I think that's why I have so many like nonfiction purchases this time. I have a whole shelf of, of nonfiction that I still haven't read, but you know, there's always room for more. <laughs> the next book uh, that I picked up was um, Crisis in the Red Zone by Richard Preston. The story of the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history and of the outbreaks to come. So I read The Hot Zone by Richard Preston, which was all about the origins of Ebola and an outbreak um, that we had here in the U.S. among some monkeys. And I loved that book. It was so good. It was five stars. I loved the way the author wrote that book and it was so good. And so I thought I liked that book so much that I'm going to read um, the sequel to that book. So really excited to read this. He's got some other books that I'm going to pick up. There's at least two that I also want to read by this author. So I will be also picking up his, those other two books as well. And then <clears throat> this is a new release called, uh, De Evolution by Max Brooks. This is the same author who wrote World War Z. I have World War Z, but I have not read it yet. But this one I'll probably read before World War Z because this one sounds really good. It's about Bigfoot. And so I'm like really excited to read that. <laughs> Plus I like the cover. Look at this cute dust jacket. Really like it. I haven't looked at it without the dust jacket. Let me just check that out. Oh, it's totally white. Look at this book, totally white. And then red on the spine. Yeah, I really like that. Nice, I like that white book of course you know i got to be careful it'll get dirty <laughs> get the dust jacket back on here and we'll continue on oh max brooks i didn't even think about what he looked like here let me show you a picture of the author that's him i, I expected him to be a lot older but no he looks like a young guy anyway looks are deceiving though he might he might be older Another book that I got was uh, Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. And I saw the book goddess talk about this on her channel. And I thought that, and I had seen this before, but I had never picked it up. And when, after I heard her talk about it though, I decided I needed to pick it up. It is about this bird and a dog. And the story is told from their point of view and it's during a zombie apocalypse. So we're getting the pet's point of view during a zombie apocalypse. I thought that sounded like a really good time. So I, I had to pick that up, especially after I saw the booktube goddess talk about it. She really liked it. The next book was uh, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, um, which I have already read this and I have a review for this. So I will put, put uh, link the review up top here for you. I really, really enjoyed this. It was um, it was very exciting. It gives you a lot to chew over. I had all kinds of theories about what could be going on in this book. It's a haunted house story. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about this book. I loved it and definitely recommend it if you like haunted house stories. The next book I got from my Box Walla subscription, it is called Memento Mori by Muriel Spark. And it is about a group of elderly people who are receiving phone calls telling them that they're going to die. 
and um, and some things that happen uh, because of those phone calls. And it's supposed to be really funny and um, and it sounds really good. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't know when I'll get to it because I'm, I'm pretty much in a nonfiction mood right now. So it might be a while before I get to that one, but it does sound good. And then the other book that I got in my box wall of subscription was Mirrors by Eduardo Galliano. And let's see, I can't remember what this was about, so I'm just going to read some of the back to you here. Let's see. Eduardo Galliano's Mirrors is a body subversive and sometimes heartbreaking unofficial history of the world observed and mirrored to us through the eyes and voices of history's unseen, unheard and forgotten. Okay. Right. I remember that now. And like the little, there's like a little quote from the Philadelphia Inquirer here that says a genre defying work that combines poetry, narrative, fiction, journalism, and social analysis and political opinion to tell the story of people who have been sacrificed for our progress. So yeah, that sound is really good. Okay. And then like, how am I doing on time? Oh, 11 and a half minutes. We're good. So the next book that I got is uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Um, I buddy read this um, with a friend. Hi, Belle. Uh, we read this together. I just finished it yesterday. Really, really enjoyed this. Um, of course, it's a possession story. Um, and it takes place in the 80s be, uh, with the, the two main characters are teenage girls. And I absolutely love this cover because look, it looks like an old school VHS movie cassette cover. <laughs> the Be Kind Rewind, you know, and it's even like dirty, like it's got smudges on it and stuff. And that's how they used to look like you'd rent a movie from a video store in the 80s. And they, they always had the sticker and the sticker was always dirty. <laughs> and then on the back, they even have staff pics, you know. And uh, that was a, another thing they did was um, they had like a section where the staff would pick the movies that they liked and then they would keep them there for like a month or so before they would swatch them out, swap them out for other movies that the staff liked. And that's what that sticker was for. Anyway, fond memories. I really liked this cover and I really liked the book too, as far as that goes. And I do plan to do a review for that. So um, when I post that review, I'll come back to this video and link it. So if you're reading it, if you're watching this video later, it, it'll be there. Okay. And the next book I got was Ghoster by Jason Arnup. Um, this is about um, a girl's boyfriend who disappears. Kate Collins has been ghosted. She was supposed to be moving in with her new boyfriend, Scott, but all she finds after relocating is an empty apartment. Scott has vanished. His possessions have all disappeared except his cell phone. Kate knows she shouldn't hack into Scott's phone. She shouldn't look at his Tinder profile, his call history, his social media accounts, but she can't quite help herself. That's when the trouble starts. Strange whispering phone calls from numbers she doesn't recognize, scratch marks on the walls that she can't explain and the growing feeling that she's being watched. So yeah, I enjoyed the last days of Jack Sparks so much that I had to try another one of his novels and this is the one I picked. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay, and then I got the, let's see, I think this is the third book in the Murderbot Diaries. I re read the first book and absolutely loved it. It was so good. So I'm going to read the whole series and I, I, I need to just sit down and buy all of them at the same time, but I haven't gotten around to that. I keep wanting to buy other books too. So I've, <laughs> I've got the third book now. <laughs> I haven't read the second book yet, but I'm going to wait till I have all the rest of the books before I finish that series. And then the next book I bought is Below by Ryan Lockwood. I'm going to buddy read this with a friend next month. And of course, it is a sea creature killing people story. So, you know, always, always a good time. I really like sea creature stories. Okay. And then this book I found at Walmart of all places. I think it was like $6. Um, I had, I had heard about it before and I remember thinking that I really wanted to read that, but I couldn't remember what it was about. It's called Fox 8 and it's by George Saunders. And it's apparently about a fox who learns how to speak English or learns how to speak human. <laughs> And um, by listening to bedside, by standing outside of a window and listening to parents tell their children bedtime stories. So I thought that sounded really good. So it was so cheap and I, pick, I picked it up. Okay, and that covers all the books that I've got uh, since my last book haul. And um, that's all for me this time.